Hi folks, hope you're okay today. Uh, we're looking at the Lamb of God and uh, let's come before the Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for this day and we thank you for your love and for your grace and we give you the praise and we give you the glory today. We acknowledge that you are King and that you are God and that there is no God like you. And so Father, we pray as we look at your word now that you would bless and that you would speak to us, that you would work in our lives, that we would know your love and your grace. And bless us now, Lord, and may we come to know you as Lord and Saviour. In the name of Jesus Christ, Amen. Maybe you are a successful person today, and you believe in the philosophy of believing in yourself. There are millions of people today who believe that philosophy that if you just believe in yourself that's all that matters but the Christian faith is completely opposite of that if we turn to John chapter 1 verse 29 it says the next day John saw Jesus coming towards him and said Luke the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world John the Baptist is a prophet of God and he points to not yourself not to believe in yourself but he points to the Lamb of God. J.C. Ryle, the bishop, or Bishop J.C. Ryle, said this, Christ is a saviour. He did not come on earth to be a conqueror, or a philosopher, or a male leader of morality, or teacher of morality. He came to save sinners. He came to do that which man could never do for himself, and to do that which is essential for man's real happiness. He came to take away sin. You'll never understand Christianity if you do not understand that you cannot save yourself. That the only way to be saved is to trust what God has done th for you through the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ, who died in your place, the Saviour. In 1 Corinthians 15.3 it says, For what I received I passed on to you as of first importance, what? That Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. In John 10 verse 11 it says, I am the good shepherd, the good shepherd what? Lays down his life for the sheep. Jesus Christ laid his life down for you. He gave his life for you. And so it's not about you saving yourself. It's about what the Lamb of God has done for you. The Lamb of God died on a cross for you and gave himself for you. One writer said, John knew, John the Baptist that is, who preached Jesus the Lamb of God. He said, John knew that Jesus was not only the Christ, the Messiah, but he was also the Lamb of God through whom all the sins of the world could be washed away. Mr. Thomas Hale. So first of all, I want to say this, that politics can't save you. Around the world today we see many political problems at Gaza, between Gaza and Israel, between uh, the north and the south of Ukraine. There are many conflicts in, politi in politics and perhaps we might rely on our politicians to sort problems out, maybe problems locally, maybe making sure that the bins are emptied, uh, maybe uh, making the roads are okay and we put our trust in politics but politics will not save us. Politics cannot get us into the kingdom of God. In John chapter 1 29 it says the next day John saw Jesus coming towards him and said Luke the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. John is saying Luke at the th Luke to what don't look to other things but look to Jesus Christ who, who gave his life for you. If you trust in politics po politicians will let you down but politics cannot get you into the kingdom. In 1 John chapter 1 7 he says but if we walk in the light as he is the light we have fellowship with one another and this is what he says and the blood of Jesus his son purifies from all sin 1 John 1 7 when Christ died on that cross he was being punished for your sin he died for your sin he gave his life for you on that cross and shed his blood for you on that cross and he loved you John Calvin says there are other There are other favours indeed which Christ bestows upon us, but this is the chief favour that the rest depend on it, that by appeasing the wrath of God, 
he makes to us to be reckoned holy and righteous. Did you understand that? The great benefit of Christ dying on that cross is he appeased the wrath of God. The wrath of God must punish sin, but instead of punishing you, he punished his son. His son was broken to you. I met a lady today, and she said to me, don't preach the cross, it's gruesome. And I started preaching. She said, don't preach the cross, it's gruesome. I said, do you believe the Bible? She said, yeah, well, the Bible preaches the cross. Oh, no, don't, it's gruesome. I said, do you believe in God? She says, yeah, well, God teaches in his word that Christ should die for our sin, the cross. Oh, no, no, don't. It's gruesome. I said, do you believe in Jesus? She said, yeah, but don't preach the cross. It's gruesome. I said, well, Jesus went to the cross and died for our sin. You see, the cross is gruesome. It's gruesome because sin is ugly. Sin has come into the world and it's poisoned the world. And the only way for God to deal with it is come down and die on a cross for our sin. And Christ died in our place for our sin, and politics can't do that. Politicians can't do that. The next thing, philosophy can't save you. I was listening to a few documentaries the other day and various uh, programs by a philosopher called A.J. Ayer. And A.J. Ayer was an analytical philosopher at Oxford and a brilliant chap. What uh, came to my attention uh, when analytical philosophy came to Oxford, there was these various philosophical trends. One minute A.J. Ayer was in fashion, and the next minute he was out of fashion, and the next minute he was in fashion. And that's philosophy for you. Philosophy comes in fashion and out of fashion. One minute is Plato, next minute is Aristotle, next minute is Kant, next minute it is Hegel, and these philosophers come in and out and in and out of fashion. And so we can't get to the kingdom of God. We can't get to heaven by philosophy. But John the Baptist says in 1 John chapter, chapter uh, sorry, John chapter 1 verse 29. The next day John saw Jesus coming towards him and said, Luke, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. He takes the sin of the world for you, my friend. In the Old Testament, the lambs were sacrificed on the day of Passover. A celebration of Jesus, uh, uh, sorry, uh, a celebration of Jews coming out of Egypt. And so the Lamb is a celebration of us coming out of our Egypt, our sin. And that's why he died on that cross for you, my friend. Lambs were killed so as to, show is, uh, to save Israel from their sins. And lambs were killed to save us from ours. And the Lamb, the final Lamb, the final Lamb is Christ. He was holy because God is holy and God must judge and he judged his son instead of judging us. Eddie, an outspoken atheist, uh, 50 years, for 50 years contracted a debilitating disease and was dying slowly and he lay in a hospice. Christian friends visited him and told him of Christ's love and he seemed not interested one Sunday, a pastor visited him, prayed, and he asked Jesus to forgive, for forgiveness and salvation. Why? Because Christ died for his sin. Because he realized philosophy couldn't save him. In 1, Cor uh, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24, it says, He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness, 1 Peter 2, 24. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree so that we might, what, die to sins and live for righteousness. He himself bore our sins in his body. He, he, he died by taking the punishment that we deserve on the tree, that's a sin on for cross, so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness, 1 Peter 2, 24. Is God calling you today to trust in Christ, trusting him without delay? Don't say I'll do it tomorrow because you don't know if there's going to be a tomorrow. Do it today. So we've seen that Christ, that, that uh, politics can't save us. We've seen that philosophy can't save us. And then we come to morality. Morality can't save us. You might say, well, Jason, I'll pull up my bootstraps. I'll 
do good deeds and as I do my good deeds I'll get to heaven that's not true my friend in John chapter 129 it says the next day saw Jesus coming towards him and said Luke the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world the answer is not morality the answer is Christ crucified this Christ crucified message was for the whole world it was for everyone who would believe don't say I've lived a good life I'll get into heaven no no you say you believe in Christ and that is my foundation in 1 John in John chapter 2 verse 2 it says he is an atoning sacrifice I think it's 1 John 2 2 he is an atoning sacrifice for our sins and not only for our sins but also for the whole world Christ died for the whole world and he, that means he died for you excuse me that means he gave his life for you that means he shed his blood for you and gave his all for you JC Ryle says the blood that that he shed was precious enough to wash away the sins of all his atonement on the cross was sufficient for all mankind but efficient only to them that believe the sin that he took up and bore on the cross was the sin of the whole world J.C. Ryle one of the great Christian writers of all time do you want to know God then you'll not know him through politics philosophy or morality Do you want a relationship with God then you'll not know him through philosophy politics and morality the only way to know God is through the cross the only way to be saved is through the cross the only way is to look to the Lamb of God he died for you on that cross and it's about you coming with your sin and all that you've done wrong and asking God to forgive you Isaiah 53 verse 10 yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him he has put him to grief when you make his soul an offering for sin he offered himself on that cross for you today so please believe in Jesus today if you haven't believed in him confess your sins today and trust in him look to him and ask him to forgive you ask him to come into your life and be your Lord and Savior today and God will bless you let us come before the Lord and ask his blessing today say this prayer after me and the Lord will come into your life Oh God I confess my sin I acknowledge you died on a cross for me and I ask Lord that you will forgive me I ask Lord that you would come into my life and be my Savior and Lord I ask this Lord in your name and for your glory Amen if you pray that prayer the prayer doesn't save you but you what you're doing is you're saying Lord I be my Savior and the Lord will come and he'll be your Savior and he will save you and he will dwell with you as you look to the Lamb of God who died on that cross for your sin may May you be blessed today. May God be with you and trust in him. God bless you.